So this is gonna be a very long video. So grab a piece of paper, a pen, a snack, a drink. I got my Pedialyte. Mm. Before I get started, I wanna let you guys know that I have two videos coming to my channel fairly soon. Um, one of them is gonna talk about how to be a sanitary makeup artist, and another one is how to reduce your waste as a makeup artist. So make sure you're subscribed to my channel and click on the notification bell icon. That way you can be notified when those videos do pop up. You ready? Okay. So what do you need in your makeup kit? This is going to be a basic guideline to start out if you are brand new. Um, I'm not gonna talk about specific brands or products. This is not that type of video. I just want you guys to have a list of things to get, like a checklist. That way when you go makeup shopping, it, it, it is your responsibility to find out what foundation, what whatever to have in your kit. I'm just here to tell you what you need. Okay, well let's just start with brushes. So the first thing you're gonna need for your kit are brushes. Uh, I'm not gonna go into the different types of brushes. You know, obviously you're gonna need a face brush, powder brush, foundation brush all the brushes to do every single step of the makeup application but what i want to talk about is getting brushes that actually last you for the entire lifespan of your career if you are spending money on cheap brushes they're not going to last and they're not going to make your makeup application look good there is a lot of behind um, a well-crafted brush so Please keep that in mind. Uh, you're gonna end up having to buy the cheap brushes over and over again because the ferrule's gonna come off, the bristles are gonna fall out, you know, so it's better to just invest your money on a brush that's gonna last you. You may not have to go to the extreme expensive ones, but get something in, mid, in the mid-range category, and that's still gonna last you forever if you take care of your brushes properly. I don't think I have to go through every single brush but I'm sure you understand you're going to need a powder brush, a concealer brush, a lip brush, eye brushes, cheek brushes, you know what I mean? I hope, <laughs> I hope. There's so much to go over, that's why I'm like, please don't make me go into that realm. You need brushes. <laughs> okay, so moving on to tools, you're going to need a bunch of different things. You're gonna need a palette. I recommend getting a metal one if you can. Plastic is totally fine, you can cleanse it, it's great, whatever, but metal is gonna last you for a very long time, if you take care of it. You're going to need a palette. Again, I suggest getting metal ones, but plastic works fine. Silicone uh, works fine, lasts a long time, but if you had a choice, I would still say go for the metal ones before you go for silicone or plastic. I don't have examples for these, but I'm pretty sure you know what they look like. You're gonna need tweezers. You're going to need a sharpener. I prefer sharpeners that have a lid on them so it catches any sort of leftover makeup in between clients before you cleanse it out. Um, and then scissors, little tiny ones so that you can cut things like lashes and sponges and whatnot. This is so much information to have in one YouTube video and I'm trying not to run on tangents with every subject. So I apologize if it seems like I'm skimming through everything. I have to. Um, you're going to need brush cleansers as well as brush shampoos. So get one that's alcohol-based for quick cleaning. And then when you get home, shampoo the hell out of your brush uh, because that's the sanitary thing to do. I do want to note that if you see me flash a specific brand or talk about a specific brand, it's because this brand has helped me throughout my makeup career and I'm showing the love in return, but I do love the products that I show you in this video. You're going to need a towel for various reasons. I like to use a towel to set up my station. Um, you may need to wipe your hands. There's a lot of reasons why you need a towel. Um, you can also get a like a silicone mat, a desk pad, um, anything that's flat. I like to have a barrier between the table I'm working on and the makeup that I'm setting up. It's just an extra, added precaution of safety, and I suggest you getting that as well. You also need to bring your own water. Now, I recommend bringing a reusable bottle of water versus a plastic water bottle, because the earth, save it. Um, bring filtered water with you, because as a makeup artist, you know, we sometimes work in sketchy areas. You know, if you work in television, film, fashion, editorial, you know, you're in these sketchy locations where it's like, you don't know where that water has been. Like you don't want to use that sink, whatever sink that they give you to use. And then I, as a personal makeup artist, I've also been in houses where I'm like, I would never, I would never use the sink in specific homes. So 
bring your own water your own cup that way moving on to the next tool when you use these items if you choose to put this into your kit you can have your own water to get these things wet and then you can use them on your clients now i exclusively only use beauty blender in my kit because i appreciate this material i love this material and i use the manufactured soap that goes along with this material i don't buy knockoffs i don't i don't have time for for knockoffs so I will use this and I want you guys to know because on the internet for whatever reason in some makeup artist communities you know these are so controversial I don't know why you can go down the rabbit hole if you want to on what is considered clean and what isn't yes these are clean yes these are sanitary to use on multiple people however the sanitary thing to do is to make sure that each client has their own makeup sponge. So if you have a bridal party of 12, you better go to that bridal party with 12 of these beauty blenders on hand. Do not use the same sponge, try to clean it off real quick and use it on somebody else. That's not sanitary. Then you're going to need disposable items. So you're gonna need cotton buds. This one I got from Daiso. Um, this is individually wrapped. You don't need to have them individually wrapped. It just so happens that this one is. Uh, you're gonna need some cotton buds. You're going to need some makeup sponges. You are going to need cotton rounds. Um, you're going to need lip brushes, like so. I prefer the brush applicator, but they also have the doe foot applicator. Uh, mascara wands, ding ding and then spatulas like these little disposable ones lip brushes spatulas mascara wands da, 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 da. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. tissues and paper towels now you're going to need all of these items because in the event that you have someone in your chair who has broken skin you have to use disposables on that skin in no way shape and form are you allowed to use a porous tool on broken skin that includes sunburned skin peeling skin a skin that happens to have a scratch on it and it just broke the skin you know uh, um, a zit that's just being a jerk absolutely not no and absolutely not no um, when you have a porous item it must be thrown away completely if it touches broken skin you're going to need trash bags and Ziplocs. So you can either have a doggy bag, you know, or Ziploc bags. Um, I actually prefer Ziploc bags because in the event of throwing away disposables, you can throw it in the bag, zip it shut, throw it away. But same thing, you can do the same thing here. I just, I like the uh, security of a Ziploc bag. Now you're gonna need alcohol wipes. I understand that these right now are gold. We are in crazy times right now with COVID-19 and, um, it's gonna be hard to find these right now. So if you can find isopropyl alcohol in 70%, get some of this and then use paper towel to kind of clean off instruments and to clean off you know, your tables that you're working on, your chairs that you're working on. I also suggest Clorox wipes if you can find them. I normally have Clorox wipes uh, in my kit. I usually carry the travel size ones because it's easier that way. And I'll wipe down the table and I'll wipe down my chair just before I set up my, my whole spread. It's the clean thing to do. Again, it's gonna be hard to find these items, I'm aware, but you're more, in li more than likely gonna be able to find alcohol. Make sure it's 70%. Again, another thing, uh, misinformation that I'm seeing in the makeup artist community online is that people are going for 99% alcohol. That's not gonna sanitize the items. If you must know the quick science behind 70 versus 99, the alcohol will coagulate a, a protein, right? So you have a harmful organism, right? And they have a membrane around the cell which is made up of protein. What happens with alcohol is that uh, pure alcohol will coagulate it, right? So 99% is almost pure. So what's gonna happen is that when you have a 99% alcohol hit that cell membrane, it's gonna coagulate it really fast. And it's not going to kill off that organism, it's just going to render it inactive. So inside of it, it's still gonna be alive. But the outside is solid. But under certain conditions, when it gets wet again, guess what? Oh! alive again when you have a 70% alcohol 
hitting that cell, it's gonna start to coagulate that cell on the outside, but in a slow rate. So what happens is the alcohol is able to seep through and get into the cell, coagulating that as well, so it renders the cell dead. That is why it's very important to use 70% versus 99. 99 is just too pure, it's, it evaporates way too quickly. You need 70% in order for it to fully kill off the harmful germs. Because science! Next, you're going to need a container for all of your dirty tools. I shouldn't have to say this, but I'm gonna. Make sure your dirty items are separate from your clean items. Don't, don't go just throwing things back together. You know, common sense, but hey, I'm gonna say it anyway. Now this, I like a size like this because, excuse you, Mason, my God, he's just making noise everywhere. I like to use a size like this. I found that it is perfect um, to carry all of my dirty tools and I can clean this out too. Um, your brushes, your sponges. I put all of my porous items in their own container and then I pour, put my non-porous items in another container. I like to keep everything separate and it's just how I work. I just prefer to not, I just prefer to not. <laughs> so it's more likely that my non-porous items like my metal tools are gonna touch um, broken skin. Like for example, uh, like tweezers, when you go to pull out a hair, that automatically needs to be disinfected. So I don't mix that in with my porous substances. I leave it alone in its own container because I know I can put it in barbicide, which is also something that you need. That slipped my, my list. You need barbicide, yes you do. Which is why you need the metal stuff because the non-porous substances can be dunked in barbicide, which then disinfects them, which is fantastic. And then you can use them on multiple clients and then be totally fine. It's just that extra added step of safety when it comes to using your tools. But again, we're fine working at the sanitary level. That's where we need to be, soap and water. Yes, it's fine. But metal tools, disinfect them, please. Okay, I had to get this because it's from, Barbicide totally slipped from my mind. It's very important that you get it and learn how to use Barbicide properly. Go on their website, take their certification course. It's free, it's so easy. That way you know how to use it. But you're going to need a container that holds Barbicide. One of these little guys or the Barbicide glass container. I just like, it's just, I trust myself around plastic versus glass. Um, and then I can travel with this bad boy and I don't have to worry about it breaking. But what you're gonna do is you're going to put the mixture in here. Then you're gonna throw all your tools like in this tray. It's so hard to do like this. They're gonna throw it in your tray, your tools, you know. Then you're going to close the lid and it's going to submerge the tools in the barbicide. And then when you're done, you follow the steps that you need to take in order to properly uh, dry them off. So grab yourself, uh, what is this called? A uh, a nail disinfecting tray, something like that. They have these in nail salons um, and in some beauty spas and everything. So get yourself one of these guys or just get the, the tool that barber, that you know uh, hairdressers use to put in their combs and brushes and stuff. Get one of those. Okay, so much talking and I haven't even gotten into the makeup yet. God, I really feel like I went through that fast, but let's just keep going. Okay, so now let's get into skincare again. Not gonna talk about brands, but just write this down so that you can take yourself to the makeup shops and play. Try different things out and ask for samples. Samples are gonna be the best way for you to figure out what you like and what you don't like, okay? You're going to need a makeup remover. Um, sometimes you have clients who sit in your chair who already have makeup on. It happens, it's kind of upsetting, but it happens. So you're gonna need to remove their makeup. You're gonna need to cleanse their face. So you need a makeup cleanser, which is another reason why you need your own water because and then you're gonna need an astringent toner, witch hazel, something to make sure you have that added tone. I like astringent, it just, it's another cleansing step, just to really, really clean that skin. Then you're going to need two types of moisturizers. I'm avoiding serums right now just because it's really not necessary when you're starting. You can get that later but two types of moisturizers, one for normal to dry skin and then one for normal to oily skin. So you're gonna have a moisturizer that's more hydrating and a moisturizer that has a mattifying aspect to it. You're going to need SPF, 
every now and then it'll be asked of you so carry that in your kit you're going to need eye creams i recommend two a light eye cream and then a deep puffing eye cream you especially with like uh, mature skin you don't want anything that's like too heavy on the eye because then when you go to apply makeup it gets kind of cakey it doesn't settle correctly so use a light eye cream and then you're going to need some that deep puffs the eye a deep puffer if you need if you can only get one just get a deep puffing eye cream it'll save you you're gonna need a primer for a face and then a primer for the eye then you're gonna need a misting spray like a setting spray whatever kind of spray that you like to use you're gonna need that if you feel like you've been watching this video forever Fuck, I've been filming this video for forever. <laughs> the sun has shifted into a weird position, but Mason's happy looking out the window, so I'm gonna leave it as is, so I'm sorry for being blown out right now. I just can't be bothered to bring out my makeup lights. <laughs> it is what it is. Okay, foundations. You need two different kinds of foundation in your kit. You need a liquid and a cream, wax and a mousse, a, you know, whatever. There's so many different types of foundations out there. Go out, play, find out which one works best for your technique, your tools, and then you'll figure it out. Um, now, when it comes to the shade range, now obviously, if you're starting out, you don't have the money to buy the entire line. Totally understandable. All you need are five shades. That's it. You need the lightest color, the darkest color, and then three colors in between spread out evenly throughout the entire foundation line. That way, you can get a good range of colors by mixing them onto your palette. Now, in my opinion, I think that's gonna make you a better artist because that's how I learned. And now when it comes to mixing foundations to fit someone's skin, I can do that no problem. No problem at all. So do it that way. That way you can also get found different types of foundation a little bit easier because you're only buying five colors. You can also pick up adjusters. These guys by Face Atelier, oh, uh, it doesn't matter what undertone the foundation is, so long as you have your adjusters. I'm telling you, I wish I had known about these when I started out as a baby makeup artist because that would have changed the game. I wouldn't have even bothered buying so many different colors of foundation because I had the adjusters. This one right here, this is called Blaze. This is called Heat. This will change the undertone of your foundations in a snap. You need something more olive or more golden, go right ahead. You need something that's more cool tone, more pinky, there you go, go ahead. I know it looks like pinky, yeah, but trust, this is amazing. You need these in your kit. You need these in your kit. You need these in your kit. <laughs> Concealers is the same thing. Make sure you carry two different types of concealer, preferably the concealer that matches the foundations that you have in your kit. So if you have a liquid, foundation carry a liquid concealer if you have a moussey foundation carry a moussey concealer because it ends up looking better on the skin when you match your products same thing with um the shade ranges too you need five the lightest the darkest three in the middle and then mix and match your foundation colors powders you need a no color powder like a translucent just setting powder and then a light medium dark doesn't matter what, you can use a powder foundation if you want, but know that if you're gonna use a powder foundation, it's going to add coverage to your makeup. So if you don't want that, just get a setting powder and get some that's sheer and just get a light, medium, dark, just start. Bronzers and highlighters, I feel like when you're starting out are not quite the necessity because if you have eyeshadows, those can be used as bronzing and highlighting tools for the face. You just gotta use them sparingly and it works. So if you're trying to figure out what to not buy right now, I would skip on the bronzer and highlighter because again, use your eyeshadows, it works. Okay, so blushes. You're going to need four different blushes. You're gonna need two cool tone and two warm tone. So you're gonna start off with something light like this. I, I like neutral, it's just easier to go with everybody, but you can get something that's a little bit more pinky. Sure, it's totally fine. Then you can also get something deeper so you can work on richer skin tones you can blend these two together create your own shade it's great so you have your cool tone blushes and you got your warm tone blushes i like to do something peachy and then something richer oh, i love my rich color so much anyway so you can also do that then with these four blushes you can mix and match them and <laughs> create a special shade for your special someone and you'll have 
the entire gamut that you can do. This is also another, what color is this? Is this Raisin? Yes. Oh, Get Raisin by MAC. Get Raisin. Ooh, it's a little, that looks good on everybody. I love it. Eyeshadows. So you're gonna need a palette for your eyeshadows. I strongly recommend getting the Mio because this is really easy to clean. You can dunk the little pods it comes with in Barbicide, which is fantastic. And um, this fits all of the eyeshadows that you need to start. So you're gonna need about 13 eyeshadows. Avoid the rainbow. I know it's so hard and as a makeup artist, you're like, I wanna buy pink and green and purple and blue. <laughs> Don't because you won't use them as often um, or at all. <laughs> so what you're gonna need are five cool tone eyeshadows, five warm tone eyeshadows, a white, a black, and a gold. That's all you're gonna need to carry out your business. So I have here color examples of warm tone eyeshadows, cool tone eyeshadows, a black, a white, and a gold guarantee you you can do a lot of looks with this <laughs> you can mix and match blend colors together to get that perfect eye shade and this is going to get you through so much so many makeup applications i know it sound this se may seem quite boring and that's not what you want to hear but it's literally all you ever need warm tones cool tones this is more this looks like it's like a warm one but it's kind of like a taupey color, very, very pretty. These are Cosette eyeshadows, fantastic. Um, warm tones, cool tones, black, white. The black and white is what's gonna help lift and darken some specific shades if you're mixing, so that's why you need these two. And then the gold, everybody wants a gold eyeshadow, so you're just gonna need a gold. And that's what I find I use more in my kit. And yeah, they see it. For eyeliner, you're going to need three things. You're gonna need a black pencil, a brown pencil, and then like a black liquid liner or a black gel. Something to create that harsh wing line. But you're also gonna have clients who don't really wear eyeliner and don't want the whole shebang. So a brown eyeliner is gonna be perfect for them or a black one, just tight lined. You're gonna need those three things. Mascara, sort of the same situation. You need a big, bold, black mascara. You need the non-waterproof version and then a waterproof version. You know, <laughs> I'm so happy you my wedding day. You know, you, you need the waterproof for sure. But you're also going to need like a black brown mascara, something very simple. You do have to cater to so many different types of people. So you want to make sure that everyone is included, including the people who don't wear makeup and don't want to look like they're wearing makeup. A black brown brown mascara is going to be perfect for them. Lashes. Okay, so this is a fun one um, because look, I know that there are a lot of people out there who want the full on heavy llama 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 lash. I get it, but not everyone's like that. And you have to make sure you cater again to everyone. So in my opinion, not, cons not counting the people who clearly want the thickest lashes you have and they will let you know, carry a couple. You wanna carry, simple clean basic lashes this number 747 is a number that goes throughout a lot of makeup artist lashes and this is the size small you want just basic clean cut lash you also need to get the lashes that look very sparse the boring ones as i call them um i'm sorry i don't have an example for you right now it's tucked, <laughs> but for the people who like who don't wear makeup, and you know they need a little they, they need a little lash. If you put this on them, they are going to freak out. And this is nothing. This is nothing. They are going to freak out. So you have to make sure that you have the sparse looking ones, the ones that barely show up, because on those people it's going to show up and it's going to look beautiful and it's gonna make them feel a little bit more confident and they're much lighter weight than these two. Now, for the girls who do love a bit of drama and who are pretty glam, I recommend getting just uh, your basic wispies. Look at, the, look at the difference between <laughs> the dramatic lashes and then the simple ones. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, you said, try to put this on someone who doesn't wear makeup. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, 
these are for the ones that really love to enhance their eyes and this is going to be really really thick on somebody the ones that look darker than this that's a specific client and here's another one that um, looks a little bit more structured but not as heavy as the other ones so I actually wouldn't go any further than a wispy to be honest as your main big bold lash anything darker than that I feel like someone will let you know that they want that but keep it simple keep it basic in your kit these are gonna go farther than any other lash um, the 747s like the main wispy ones the small the medium I don't never use the large and then the extra small if you can find them oh I use extra small like nobody's business and the last category yay <laughs> lips so with lips I actually prefer lipsticks I don't like liquid lips I feel like not everyone looks good with liquid liquid lipstick so if you feel like you need it that's on you um I recommend carrying five different nudes same concept as the foundation the lightest shade the darkest shade and three in between equally amongst the makeup brand that you're gonna choose and then when it comes to red lipsticks you need two a cool tone and a warm tone red lipstick that will look good on anybody so um, I have here two by Kosas I'm gonna show you this one here is a warm tone red lipstick something that has a bit of orange behind it and then you have a cool tone red lipstick that has a bit of blue behind it so you see the difference between the two these are gonna be great for more olive tone people this is gonna be great for more pinky tone people so two different types of red that works on uh, different types of skin you're also going to need a rich plum lipstick and a rich pink lipstick now not everyone's gonna ask you for that hot 1980s pink lip, but when you blend these colors with nude lipsticks, they soften up. So like a bright pink will turn into a soft baby pink, depending on the different type of nude lipstick that you mix it up with. A red lipstick blended with a nude is gonna turn coral. So blending is going to be key. And I'm telling you, when you have just a simple colors and you learn how to blend colors together to create the perfect lip, you don't need all the shades. It's gonna make you a better makeup artist, I promise. For lip liners, easy. Five nude shades. Er, hi, Lana Reese here, editing the video. And I wanted to let you guys know that what I'm telling you about lip liners is not true, <laughs> the brain. So for lip liners, what you need is a light nude, a dark nude, a cool tone red, a warm tone red, a plum, and maybe a pink. If someone really wants pink lipstick, maybe then get a pink liner. That's it. You can blend, mix and match, whatever. <laughs> Let's get back to the video. For lip gloss, all you need, clear. Oh my gosh, did I do it? I did it. I'm, <laughs> do you see why we don't charge $50 for a face application? This is just too expensive and you have to replace most of these items anyway because they need to be re replenished. So uh, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, share it with your friends, subscribe to my channel. Remember there are two really important videos coming to my channel soon and I'm very excited about those two. I'm really passionate about those two. So um, especially if you're brand new as a makeup artist, I want you to watch the upcoming videos. So subscribe, uh, make sure you hit the notify, the notify bell. That way it'll notify you <laughs> when the videos pop up and yeah, phew, support me by clicking the link in my description box for my coffee page. I really love you and I will see you all very soon. Goodbye everyone.